We're on Liquid Lunch back here with uh, me, Hugh Riley, and of course Natalie Filippelli, my fantastic co-host for Tuesday. And we're here, uh, we have Yasus, Yasus Afari here. Afari. Welcome. Yasus Afari. Yeah, thank Everyone you. Everyone give thanks. This is an honor. Liquid Lunch. It's a nice name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, thank you for that. And uh, now you're... Uh, you travel the world, I understand. First of all, I was just uh, saying earlier before you got here that because uh, we, we looked over your bio and stuff like that, that you've been crowned king in two African countries, apparently. Yes, but we were born king in any event. So people just recognize the kingship as people who govern their own individual sovereignty and with destiny and the world in which we live and reign. That's how it is. You know, even, for example, the constitution of many Western countries now even speak to the individual liberty and freedom. Yeah. And then kingship and family. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a governance. So even ancient Africa was ruled by a kingdom because the kingship of families, mm -hmm. which is the culmination of kingship and of individuals. So we have people who recognize these things. And even we people who have been in the diaspora and who have triumphed over the genocide of colonialism and slavery. Now, <laughs> um, you mentioned something there. I'm not sure what uh, it is exactly, but you, uh, what was it? A universal constitution or something there you mentioned? Well, you, yeah, and, he, and we're talking about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as well as the, the recognition of individual rights and liberty and freedom. Even the American Constitution allude to that. It's How interesting saying, you should mention the American Constitution because uh, our next guest is going to be talking about, he's written a book about the return to first principles okay. of the United States, which is a return to those founding principles that the United States was founded on, which really, I think, are principles for all of humanity. Until the United States was there, there was no country that actually operated on yeah. those kind of principles. And if you were to study the American Constitution, and you were to even look at the inauguration of President Obama, and you will see that they lift certain symbols and concepts straight over, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And many other European countries actually do the same thing. Uh, we must not forget in this so-called Black History Month that Africa gave birth to the whole human family. So you know, the human family starts from a peer of people, or at least several peers of people in continental Africa. So even the European people or the white people are still coming out of African people and genetics show that ethnography, archaeology and anthropology substantiate that notion. Mm -hmm. So certainly, you know, even our white brothers are just the people who run out of menaline and the journey of life. But it's the people the same way. Mm -hmm. So some people recognize that, that we are belonging to one family, irrespective of color class, creed, ethnicity, nationality, religion, mm -hmm. social orientation, we belong to one human family. Okay, so um, now uh, you're here in, uh, in Ontario, you're going to be speaking tonight, is it in Waterloo? Tonight in Waterloo at Max, Max, um, so Max something. Yeah. We'll be at Waterloo tonight. We've got, we've got the info. We'll give out that out at no the problem. end. No problem. And then tomorrow, no, today is um, Tuesday. Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll be at York University also at, at um, 2.30 to 4. And we'll be speaking on the socio-cultural significance of dub poetry and the Jamaican language. So, and uh, now you've got, uh, you've got this book here. Can I just hold this book up? Sure, please. This is uh, the book Overstanding Rastafari, and uh, uh, subtitled Jamaica's Gift to the World. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, about what Rastafari is, really, and from your perspective, in your role, you know, what, what is that gift to the world? Right. Well, as you know, the African people were brought to the so-called New World, and including Jamaica, and it's largely African people, other nationalities, were there and are still there. And therefore, we equate that to a genocide, a crucifixion of a people. And certainly, Rastafari represents a holistic and authentic and indigenous response to that experience. So in, an, in, in my analogy, which is alluded to in the book, certainly 
the grave of captivity conspired and became a womb and gave birth to a fresh concept, even the concept of Rastafari, which breathes new perspective, new hope, new breath into the temple of the family of humanity. So certainly in 1892, there was a child born in Harar, Ethiopia, called Lich Tafari Makonen, and he ascended to the throne of Ethiopia and was crowned Emperor Haile Selassie I on the 2nd of November 1930. And by the concept of eponism, he ascended to the throne on the 2nd of November and subscribed by the traditions of Ethiopia to the throne name of Haile Selassie I. And consequently, the admirers and followers of him in countries around the world, and, and particularly Jamaica, became peopled by his previous name of Rastafari. So we became the plural personality of his imperial majesty, Emperor Selassie I. Similar, I would think, to how Christ peopled himself in the community of Christians worldwide. Um, so it, it's like an institution is given the name of someone who founded the institution and so on. So the family and nation of Rastafari become the plural personality of Haile Selassie I. So certainly the book now speaks to the origins, not just the social and cultural anthropology of Rastafari, but what I advance in the book as the spiritual anthropology of Rastafari, the social and cultural and political and spiritual construct which gave birth to this faith and this movement and this liberty of Rastafari. And we, we, we went into, it's 21 chapters, so we went into the chapters, early chapters in the book, like the pioneers, or, you know, who were the people who, who ushered in this new concept. Mm -hmm. And um, we deal with gender relationship and customs within Rastafari, Rastafari and Christianity, Rastafari and politics, food and nutrition, the visit of Haile Selassie to Jamaica on the 21st of April, 1966, we deal with the, the future testament, what I describe as the future testament. You have the Old and the New Testament. We su subscribe to the concept that Rastafari represents a New Testament. We also give the world view of Rastafari and Rastafari views on different things ranging from one extreme to the next. Um, and so certainly, I, so maybe about 10 years ago, I made a proposal to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Culture in my country, Jamaica. And we suggested that they use arts in education as a means of transmitting social values and, and information to challenge self-confidence, group confidence, self-esteem, identity issues, mm -hmm. which were at the heart of some of the problems that we have in, with youths in Jamaica, as it is elsewhere. Exactly. Yeah. So certainly we, we, we put that proposal. So I became a culture agent in the school supporting that very objective and when we were in the schools we found out that the literature by then now Jamaica had phased out the London based examination bodies like mm -hmm. the Cambridge and the London and the USCI and the RSA and the AB and they had now the CXC, the Caribbean Examination Council and in that curriculum they studied Rastafari as an indigenous social and cultural response of the Caribbean experience but they were lacking in literature resource material and mm -hmm. the few that they had were written by people who were not sensitive in some instances and generally speaking were not a part of the Rastafari community so we think that that is okay also but more importantly I think that we need to write about our own reality our own outlook our own perspective from within the bowels of the movement mm -hmm. and so certainly this book was 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 in response to that deficiency and and, and has adequately to the moment um, uh, bridged that gap and has provided a bulk of information from within the movement, objective as, it, as we can get under the circumstances, and certainly address all the issues that were raised in my uh, culture agency role, mm -hmm. as well as the questions highlighted by educators and students alike in Jamaica and in the, in the at, at the time, 30 other countries that I've traveled to. This is my 41st country that I'm, 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 I'm traveling to. So certainly the book is a comprehensive spectrum of the liberty and reality and concepts and ideology and outlook and behavior and beliefs and values and ethics and concepts and beliefs of, of, of Rastafari. So, and have they adopted it as a resource in the educational system yes, in Jamaica and in Jamaica and elsewhere? Elsewhere, okay. Um, 
Can I see it? Sure. Uh, 